Papa, and Myrtle was my granny, and I miss them so much. Since they died, my mom cries a lot. It makes me cry too. chance to know what grandparents are like. It's this not only affects me, my mom, and my sister and brother, but it also affects our whole family. Holidays are not the same without them. Our lives have changed forever. It's so hard to put in words. I know I'm young, but I understand more than what people think I do. Ever since this has happened, my mom tells me to be careful of what decisions I make because one bad choice could affect my life forever. I make just like the choices my mom I make choices each and every day, some being good and some not so good. And when I make bad choices, I suffer the punishment. And I just hope that you punish her as long as the law allows. Thank you. My name is Wayne Whitaker. This is W-H-I-T-A-K-E-R. I'm the brother of Joey Whitaker which was one of the victims in this case that we've been looking at for the last two or three weeks. First off, I want to thank the court and you, Judge. You've been very congenial. I think you did a wonderful job. Also, to Mr. Hunter and his team, I want to thank them. They presented the case very, very well. They presented this case where 10-year-old kids could understand the situation. They could understand what the punishment of being with the wrong people and being involved in drugs can do for people. Probably some folks here will probably not agree with what I'm about to say or, or, or talk about. First off, I think this country has the best judicial system in the world. We have the very highest standards in the world. Nobody will disagree with that. But in my particular cases, two cases, my daughter and with my brother and his family. The system has failed us two times. Very difficult. Very, very difficult for us to take. Even though we still believe in the system, we believe the system is the best system that we could have. But in this particular case today that we're talking about, I just feel like the jury failed us. They were presented the evidence. Mr. Hunter, he explained what the charges were, what you had to do or be for these charges to apply to you. And to you, what I'm talking about to you is Yolanda. Clearly, they have made a huge mistake in this case. And I think one of the reasons for that is, is everybody 
everybody knows, drugs is rapid in this country today. And probably every person in this room today, and every person that served on this jury, drugs has just touched their family or their lives in some way. Maybe not their immediate family, but maybe through their extended family. Or maybe someone that has committed a crime toward them. But drugs has touched everybody in this room today. I feel in my heart and also to the jury. And it seems like that when drugs is involved, you just kind of give them a pass. You know, they didn't know what they were doing. They were, they were just searching for another fix. But in this particular case, there were three lives that were lost. Very tragic. Very, very tragic. Four lives, you might say, with Mr. Harper. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't want to say that I can continue to believe in the system. When it's failed me and my family two times particularly. There are very few people in this room today that have had two or three people out of their family murdered. Very few people. Probably if you took a hand raise, it probably may not be, but maybe one or two. Or maybe none. Life is difficult. But I pray today, Judge, that you would. Miss Ruby Parker, I need to back up just a little bit here. I hope if Miss Parker is acquitted of everything and she maybe goes on today or maybe six months from now or, or whenever, I hope and pray that she thinks about this and she turns her life around. She asks God to forgive her for her sins and her mistakes in life. And she leads a productive life. I wish her all the luck in the world. Because I've come to the conclusion that if Ruby Parker was even sentenced to the capital punishment in this case, which she wasn't, it would not bring my brother back. It would not bring my sister-in-law back. It would not bring Miss Myrtle Cox, a good friend of mine, back. They're still dead. They're laying in the cemetery in Clifton. They will be there from now on. They're never coming back. And what we do to her is not going to bring them back. The judge, we need all the justice we can get. This makes you think that you can't do a crime without doing the time or paying some price for your mistakes in life. I want to thank y'all today for giving me the opportunity to speak and, and express my opinion. And y'all did a very good job, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your statement.
the last five and a half years, I've relived this over and over. The memory's always with me. I don't know if you ever forget something that's that horrible. I know the family's hurting and they're angry. And I'm certain there's nothing I can say that would make it better. But I do truly regret that there's so many the painful walls of their love And I wish I could change that, but I can't. There have been so many families hurt through all of this, including my own. I just want to be able to go home to my daughter. I want to fix the things that I can't fix. To me, deserve some mom. And I want to be that again. I want to finish school. I know that my words were inadequate. But I'm truly sorry for what happened to Anne and Joey and her. Let's call Chapel Buster Grant. Thank you, some of my jail services and uh, 